Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my weighted gene co-expression network analysis. Today, I'm going to show you how to construct a gene network and identify the modules. First, let's load the data we saved from the part one demonstration. You can see we have the expression data and also the trait data. In order to construct the gene network, we need to calculate the soft thresholding powers. So first, let's set a set of soft thresholding powers from 1 to 10, then from 12, increase by 2 until 20. Once we set the powers, then we can use the peak soft threshold function to calculate the soft thresholding power. So you can see the SFT has two lists if we connect the data frame. You can see the estimated power is 6. We can use the power 6 to do downstream analysis, and also in the NIST, now the data frame, and we can see the data frame in the console windows. You can see in the column 1, it's the power from 1 to 10, then 12, 14, 16, 18, and 20. And then there are other parameters. So we can use this data frame to understand how the software estimate the power. So we can make a plot to plot the power against the, the scale-free topology mean fit and also plot the power against the mean collectivity to see why 6 is the best power for our analysis. So we can make a two plot. One plot is the power against the the scale-free topology model fit, and the other plot is the power against the mean connectivity. So let's go back to the code and make the plot. So we can use the ggplot function to make the first plot. Let's zoom in. You can see we have the power in the x axis and the, the y axis is the scale free topology model fit and also a red line was drawn above here so you can see when the power is 6 the scale free topology reaches the plateau then 6 is the best power for downstream analysis and also we can make a second plot Plot the power against the mean connectivity. Let's zoom in again. You can see from the curve, once again, 6 is the best power for downstream analysis. So now we choose the power for downstream analysis as 6. Then we can calculate the adjacencies with the power equals 6. Next, we transform the adjacency into topological overlap matrix to minimize the effect of data noise. So we can use this code to turn adjacency into topological overlap matrix. The following step is to calculate the corresponding dissimilarity. So now we can use the hierarchical clustering function to produce a gene tree. First, let's set the size for the plot. Then we can plot the gene tree. You can see in the plot windows we have the gene tree. We can zoom in. You can see the gene tree has lots of branches. Each vertical line in the branch represents a gene. 
So we have the gene tree, and then we can use the dynamic tree cut function to identify the, the modules. So we need to determine the minimum gene in a module, and then we can identify the, the modules. So let's say uh, 30. If you set the this number lower, you will identify more modules. If you use a big number, you will get a, a small number of modules. So let's use the module size as 30. Then we can use the dynamic tree cut function to identify the modules. We can use the table function to have a look how many modules we have with the minimum gene 30 in each module. So you can see we identified 22 modules. Number 0 is the one that the genes are not assigned into any modules. You can see module 1 has the highest number of genes with more than 600 and uh, module 22 has the lowest is 34. For example, if we set the minimum module size as 100, then we will identify 13 modules. So now we identify the 22 modules, we can plot the dynamic module and the, the gene tree. So let's have a look what we have in the dynamic models. You can see that's the gene numbers in each module. So the numbers are, are very boring. We like colorful images so we can convert the numbers into colors. Then use the color to show each module under the gene tree. So let's convert the uh, numbers in, into colors. Now we can have a look at what's in the dynamic colors. So you can see the gene numbers were labeled as a different color. If we see how many colors are there, you can see we have 20 two colors here to group different genes. So now we can use the color to plot the modules and the gene tree. So let's set the windows, then we can plot the modules. Let's zoom in, you can see the dynamic tree cut module under the gene tree. You can see the dark blue brown color and the light blue color represent the biggest module. The dynamic tree cut module could identify modules having similar expression profiles. So we can merge the modules that have similar co-expression genes. To merge the similar modules, we need to calculate the, the module act genes and the cluster name on their correlation. In this way, we can quantify the co-expression similarity of each module. So let's go ahead to calculate the module egg genes, then get the egg genes from the data, and calculate the dissimilarity of module egg genes. Oh. Oh, we didn't run the code at 981, so let's run first. Now we can calculate the dissimilarity and cluster the module eigenes. So let's make a plot for the module eigenes. We set the windows, then make the plot. We can zoom in, have a look at the plot. You can see, you can see the module eigenes clusters. So we can choose the height as 0 0.25 to cut the modules, which is corresponding to the correlation as 0 0.75. So let's do the cut line as 0 0.25 under the module again gene per node. Let's do the line. So we can zoom in, have a look. You can see 
We draw a line across the canisters at zero point two five. So now we can merge the the current modules. Basically, the modules down here will be merged into up here. So let's run the merge function to merge the modules. Now we set the corner as the merge the corner, and uh, we have a look at the merge the corner. You can see we only have nineteen corners now, and once we set the module action genes as the merge the module action genes. Now we can plot the merge the modules together with the dynamic tree cut module and the gene tree. We set the size for the plot, and then we can plot the figures. So let's zoom in to see the plot. You can see up here is the gene tree. Down here is the modules identified by the dynamic tree cut function, and we merged the module that have similar gene expression patterns. You can see modules in this area have similar. Gene co-expression profiles, and they have been merged into larger modules. Now we only have nineteen modules. So now we are ready to save the modules. We are going to save the merged modules for further downstream analysis. To save the merged module, we need to set the merged corners as module corners, and also set the Merge the module eigen genes as the module eigen genes. Now we are ready to save the data for next analysis. Okay, this is my second part demonstration. You can have a go to analyze your own data after watching my videos. I hope my videos can help your data analysis. Please subscribe my channel if you haven't to do so. Thank you and hope to see you in my next video.